welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. And today, my special guest is Danny O'Malley, and um, he is the president and CEO of Before the Butcher. So I don't know if you can guess what uh, what what type of company he's with, but it is about plant-based meats, right? They're not That's really meats all plant-based and right. uh danny's going to share with us an interesting interesting story about his journey into being eating plant-based i actually personally am um i eat a pl- mostly plant-based diet i do eat meats although sometimes i do work with it how yeah. long has it been that that you have started this company or how long has the company been in existence well, almost seven years. It started back in September of 2017 uh-huh. after I spent uh, a few years with uh, the the leader and innovator in the industry beyond meat. I was there for three years and then I left to start this company. Oh, okay. Well, 2017. So tell us, I know we were, we just started chatting a little bit about your journey. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got into uh, starting this company. Yeah. Yeah, and what, well, I, I can tell you, um, I, I grew up in the in the Midwest. I live out in Southern California now, but I grew up yes. in the Midwest. So I uh, grew up as uh, you know, just like most Midwesterners, a meat and potato guy. That's what I was I just knew. gonna say. Yeah, yeah. So um, six brothers and sisters. So there, there were nine of us at the at the dinner table when we were all there, and uh, uh-huh. my mom would put out big dishes of potatoes, meats, and maybe a little bit of vegetables, right? And uh, you know, <laughs> You know, it was kind of that game, like if you eat this vegetable, you get this piece of bacon. If you eat this, you get that. Yes. Uh, get us to yeah. eat our veggies, right? Right. Or in the summer, we would have salads and we'd actually have a garden in the back that we'd grow our own vegetables. But right. vegetables back then were very diff- different, uh, you know, in the Midwest than out yes. on the West Coast. We couldn't get yes. them fresh year round, at least not what you see today. So. Um, so that, you know, I came out uh, to uh, Southern California when I was still a teenager, uh, and I learned that there were other vegetables like artichokes and avocados. I, I didn't know anything about that kind of oh stuff. Oh, my gosh, and, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so part of my regular diet today, but uh, really right. interesting. And so I uh, spent most of my career in the food industry uh, with restaurants and food service distributors and marketing and sales. And um, huh? I had an opportunity about 10 years ago to work uh, for Beyond Meat. And I was at that time, I was working for uh, the largest food service distributor in the country, Cisco Food Service, as a director uh, and really ready to, to move on at that time uh, from from the corporate job. Right. And, and so uh, I was given an opportunity to work for what was really still a startup at, at the time. Very small. There was less than. I think less than 20 people at the company. And I was hired by the, the CEO and founder uh, of the company at that time. And uh, it was a it was a really interesting journey. And it and it kind of parallels my own personal journey into plant-based. And uh-huh. uh, it was always something I had been interested in in years and I always ate fairly healthy. Similar to you, I was a pescatarian for years where I ate uh, you know, mostly plant-based, but fish and seafood mm-hmm. as well. Uh, uh-huh. The hardest thing for me to give up was the seafood part. I love yeah. shrimp and and crab. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. that kind of stuff is just great. But um, so I, uh, you know, started that journey with Beyond Meat. Um, after being there for about a year and a half, uh, uh, a good buddy and uh, uh, had challenged me to to go uh, completely 100% plant based. And uh-huh. up at that time, I had kind of given up the meat and given up the poultry and was just right. uh, mostly a pescatarian, a little bit of dairy as well. Uh-huh. And that's a hard thing to give up when you're from two of the dairy states, right? Yeah, I came yeah. from Wisconsin and yes. went to California, the two biggest yes. dairy states. So dairy was difficult to give up too. But I, I'll tell you, I um, I kind of jumped it into it headlong. Um, I did have the uh, advantage, I think, of already kind of transitioning through some of the other meats. And at that time, I wasn't eating meat anymore. And I was I had really backed off from chicken. And it was mostly seafood and just a little bit of dairy. So uh, I gave myself a, a 90 day challenge. Um, and what I really did, Maria, it, it, because it, it, it is very challenging to, to make that transition. Uh, and I, I work out quite a bit. So protein is important to me. Um, and so I, I meal prepped is what I did. I spent a lot of time meal prepping. And this is what I would suggest to anybody is just really plan for this. Don't just do it. Because if you just just like any diet, if you choose to do it, it's going to fail. 
This yeah. has to be really a lifestyle change. You have to make the the uh, the change based on um, kind of diving in head first and, and changing your life to go with it. So meal right. prepping, making sure you're active and all that is really part of that to me. Mm -hmm. Least. And 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 I think that's why uh, I've been successful now for uh, um, almost nine years. And uh, and, and once you get past that, the hardest part is is getting past the hurdle of that desire, right? Uh -huh. So if, if you're used to eating meat or you're used to eating seafood or, or other um, animal based proteins, right? Um, it, it, you don't just stop. You your desire for it. You, uh -huh. Even after you stop eating it there's going to be a period of time where you're going to still desire it. Like if you were to give up smoking or drinking or something like that, that you've got the period of time where you just kind of kind of flush it through your system. But the one thing that I really noticed after 90 days was well, actually it was two, two big things for me. Uh, one is I've, I've always had uh, in, in my adult life, um, borderline high cholesterol. And every time I go into my doctor, in fact, that's one of the things I always dreaded going into my doctor was getting my cholesterol checked. Right. And the doctor would say, hey, Danny, you're really borderline here. We should think about getting you on some satins to control it. And it's like, doc, I'm, I'm pretty healthy. I'm eating healthy. I work out. And, and mm -hmm. uh, um, my cholesterol dropped 70 points. Oh, wow. Well. Yes. And, and if you know anything about that, that's pretty tremendous. And, and oh, it's it been is. fairly steady. You know, I, it, you still have you know a little bit of hills and valleys, but it's been pretty steady since then. Uh, but the other thing that I really noticed, uh, other than that dramatic point, was um, I, I, I sleep better. I, I My body kind of flushes out, so I don't feel bloated at any point in time. I can kind of eat within the parameters of what I eat, almost right. anything that I want when I want to eat it without those challenges of just not feeling good, you know, after you right, eat. Right, right, right. Exactly. Uh, and yes. that's exceptional. You know, I, I, and that's my personal journey, right? I think everybody yes. has their own journey. Everybody has their own. Cause I do have to say like eating meat, it, I have no, I had no desire to like, I had no desire to eat meat once I stopped eating it. Yeah. I was just like really happy. It, it just didn't make me feel good. But I think it's a personal, like we're saying, it's really a personal thing you know everybody's chemistry is different so maybe you know there are some people that might really be almost like addicted to it and really you know like that but for me when I stopped I it was one was because I was studying nutrition in uh, college it was part of my major and I started hearing some awful things about you know eating meat and realizing when I stopped eating meat I could just I was actually modeling at the time so I was actually able to keep control of my weight like really easily when I stopped eating meat and yeah. not eating meat heavily. And I just like I had no desire. It wasn't like I was addicted and I was dreaming of eating hamburgers when I stopped eating them. I just didn't, I was really happy without eating meat. So I think it's really like a personal, you know, personal thing, but it is important, as you said, to make a plan because everybody is different and not everybody may take to, to it the same way. So you're absolutely right. You need to make a plan and you need to try, try it. You know, I guess we can probably tell people they need to, you know, maybe try it in little steps or whatever, try it. And, um, you know, there's so many other foods out there that contain protein also. Sure. Well, there's a lot of, you know, you know uh, m actually most people don't realize most vegetables have protein in it. I mean, broccoli they has do. a lot of protein. There's a lot of protein in vegetables. Um, and as you're eating, you're, you're, you're going to get that. And, and one of the other challenges, especially in the U S today is, we're, we're just inundated with protein. We, you know, yes. we're told over and over, we got to have our protein, but honestly, you don't need as much as everybody thinks they need. The, the, the protein you need has to be balanced. And uh, I think a lot of people, especially in the US, get way too much protein. And that's why we deal with the obesity and the other issues that people have because they're getting too much protein. Ex you, know, exactly. you need your carbs, uh, you need your fats. Healthy fat, of course, you need your proteins. All of those in a balanced um, way can really uh, give you a very healthy lifestyle. But if it's not balanced, uh, you're not going to feel good. Exactly. So tell us what... Um... What kinds of um, sort of substitute meat things do you did you come up with? What yeah. types of materials or ingredients are you using for so, that? 
you know, like like anything else, over a period of time, you make adjustments and and uh, right. you change things up or you add. And and we've done a lot of that when we first started the the company back uh, almost seven years ago. Uh, my focus was on a couple of things. One, I wanted to offer a little bit healthier options than what were on the market, and I wanted to offer a greater variety with mm -hmm. with some really good bite, chew, and texture and flavor profiles that were, were maybe unique at the time. Um, they were then, but uh, uh -huh. today they're kind of, uh, you know, commonplace. But we 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 started with uh, seven or eight items. We had chicken chunks, beef tips. We had chorizo, uh, ground, uh, Italian ground, and and uh, pulled pork. And so we had some really kind of unique products back then that uh -huh. were really great. And, and the reason why I know they're great is because we're still producing them today. So there's plenty of people buying them from us and yeah. it, it's been fairly successful for us. Exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we started with uh, non-GMO soybean as the basis and the protein of our, our products, which, right. by the way, is a complete protein, which our bodies need. And some of the other proteins out there aren't complete, but, you know, quinoa and hemp and uh, a few others out there are complete proteins, which are mm -hmm. important for our uh, for us as human human beings to have complete proteins. But today we we have uh, an expanded uh, variety of products. We have um, a plant based uh, burger. We have a, a chicken burger and a breakfast sausage patty. The latest one we just hit the market with is our pepperoni, and it's uh -huh. really good. Uh -huh. And that, that's actually made with pea protein. So oh wow, protein. that's um, great. And but what I've and now we we spend a lot of time talking with the consumer and trying to and and retailers and food service operators about what uh, everybody's looking for and right. the desire lately has really been uh, to kind of backtrack a little bit and and uh, even though our products are really made to look and taste and and have the texture of animal based proteins to really mimic animal based proteins right. uh, we just created a, a what I call our vegberg which is uh -huh. a, a is it kind of going back to the old school veg, veggie burger. Right. Uh, you can see all the vegetables. You can see the carrots and the mushrooms and the zucchini and onions in there. And uh, so it's made with uh, organic vegetables and organic uh, red lentil uh -huh. uh, and some uh, quinoa as well. So uh, a little bit different than the, the traditional veggie burger. Many veggie burgers, actually, Maria, I don't know if you know, but they're not, a lot of them are not vegan. They're vegetarian because they add egg or cheese in there to help right, bind yes. them, keep it together. Yeah. So ours is actually vegan. Yours is vegan. Um, and it and it's not, uh, you know, the, the, the push right before the big uh, plant-based infusion of six or seven years ago was really uh -huh. black bean burgers. And right. the public is, yeah, they're okay with it, but just kind of a little tired of it. And, you know, yeah. and else. So <laughs> yeah. this is not a traditional black bean burger and it's not the garden burger or the Boca burger. It is really a fantastic product. So uh -huh. that's how we shifted a little bit and uh -huh. just listening to the consumer saying, hey, you know, we like these products, but we'd also like to see, we want to see our veggies too. Uh-huh. So yeah. So you have veggies, a veggie burger, a real veggie burger with veggies in it. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's great. And yeah, people, you know, don't realize, but they can make their, you know, almost any dish now, because way before, actually, when I started becoming a vegetarian, it was really difficult finding these substitutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, I mean, you can really make any dish and make it vegetarian or even vegan now. It's yeah. so easy with products like, you know, with what, your company has so and a lot of the dishes really taste just as good if not better because you feel better after eating you know i i i believe anyway a plant you know more of a plant-based dish than something that's loaded with lots and lots of heavy heavy meats so you know for anybody that wants to just try a, a plant-based recipe or, or make a recipe like say a lasagna even you can make it plant-based because you can use some of the plant-based products that you're talking yeah. about it's really really easy just to substitute that in yeah. and just not 
you know, just not um, use the meat. So um, where can people buy the products? Are they in different grocery stores or online? Uh, so we're we're um, it, on the West Coast. We're in Whole Foods and some grocery stores out here. We're all, uh -huh. you can also get it. Uh, uh, if you just go to uh, beforethebutcher.com, you can buy it online and have it sent directly to us. Most of the business that we do, uh, we do uh -huh. some retail business is really in food service oh, okay. and, uh, and uh, industrial. So we provide our products to other further processors. So I, I like to tell people, like, if you go into a grocery store and you pick up a plant-based pizza or a burrito or right. a, a bowl or a plate, there's a good chance that's our product. That you guys it. made it. Yes. That. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So then people should just be out there and I guess look in the, in their frozen section for, yeah. um, for the uh, plant-based products and um, any favorite dishes or recipes you want to share with us or recipe, I guess, or a dish or well, something. Like it, 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 it's, it, it's funny because I, I always refer back to comfort food. People have certain foods that they're really comfortable yes. with. And they they uh -huh. love to eat that way. And you you said it uh, so famously just a few minutes ago. Th this is pretty easy. You just uh -huh. literally, I mean, if you're, if you're going to make uh, pasta bolognese, which right. one of my favorite recipes, because it's yes. so simple. Yes. You can literally take your favorite pasta sauce, uh -huh. heat it up, uh, you know, in, 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 on the stove top and, yeah. and add the plant-based ground to that, mm -hmm. add whatever spices that you want. Uh -huh. And you've got your bolognese, you pour exactly. it over your pasta and you're done. It is exactly. that simple. And, and I'm going to tell you when you eat it, whether uh -huh. it's our product or it's, or one of our competitors on the market, you're just not going to know. It tastes exactly. like really meat. It exactly. tastes like a regular bolognese you're and it's fantastic. It's, absolutely it, it can right. be that simple. It can be also be as simple as just getting a hamburger and instead of using a beef burger, you're going to use a plant-based burger or a chicken burger. Uh, one of my favorites. And again, it's all about comfort food. I loved when I was growing up, I loved to have a breakfast sausage uh, sandwich, you know, uh -huh. I, I mean, egg McMuffin, right? I, I hate to refer to yes. that, but I'll tell you yeah, what. Exactly. It is fantastic, and and you, it's so simple. You cook up a plant based uh, breakfast sausage patty. Uh huh. Uh, you get some plant based cheese, and there's a great plant based egg by Just Egg. It actually yes. comes with it up, and and you've got in minutes, uh -huh. you've got your own, you know, egg, egg McMuffin. But yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I fantastic. know. I've had those too because that is something I know, you know, I grew up with having these egg McMuffins for breakfast, you know, so you kind of are used to that. Again, it's a comfort food and here you're making a healthier, you know, a healthier version. But I think the one thing I always like to tell people is that, um, you know, usually eating plant-based is healthier, but they do have to look at the ingredients in products that they buy in plant-based products to make sure that they're not getting like tons of sodium or too much fat and things like that. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, if you're not getting a quality product, it can be worse than eating, say the real thing. So people also should be, you know, look at ingredients when, when they buy products, but um, usually but eat, them, eat them in moderation. Like I, right. I tell people, look, I, my company makes these products. I don't right. even eat them every single day. I right, don't. Right. Uh -huh. uh, it, 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 honestly, you get a little tired of it when you have it available all the time. Exa but exactly. Getting, getting past that, right. um, you know, variety in your diet is really important. Right. So do that. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you want a plant-based burger, have a plant-based burger once a week or twice a week, but don't eat them every single day. Exactly. It's like else. Exactly. Variety is really important for your health. And moderation. Exactly. That's, right. That's great. All right. So you're saying people can find the products either it's already there, like in you may be providing your products to some other companies that are yeah. plant-based, or you said they can buy it online. You can look, you can go to beforethebutcher.com before and we'll direct you. And we've got fantastic plant-based recipes there as well. Great. So you'll Play around and do something we have some really great recipes uh online or if you go to our social media at before the butcher uh youtube or uh uh instagram you'll find all kinds of recipes great all right thank you danny thanks so much for being here with me and much success with the company sounds like it's sounds like it's uh 
going to do even better if it's I'm sure it sounds like it's doing really well now and I'm I'm yeah. sure it's growing cuz this is definitely a growing uh growing trend so sure is great thank all right you, thanks so much thanks so much appreciate it being here thank you Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show. And thanks as always to my producer, Britton Roselle, and this week's guest, Danny O'Malley. And as always, you can find me at marialiberati.com, on Facebook sh- at chefmarialiberati.com, on Instagram at marialiberati.com, on Twitter or X at Maria Liberati, on Pinterest at Maria Liberati, on Vimeo at Maria Liberati, and our YouTube channel where you can see all the podcasts in video on YouTube. And the channel is called the Maria Liberati Show. So you can see all these podcasts that you've been listening to on the Maria Liberati Show channel on YouTube. And my Roku channel, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. And you can also find my Gourmand World Award-winning book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking at artoflivingprimamedia.com or on Amazon and Kindle and anywhere books are sold. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.